Check this out. These awesome. are fossil shorelines next to Hudson Bay, which you can see up here in the upper left-hand corner. Post-glacial isostatic rebound. So yeah, basically after the ice is unloaded, you, which you've had these you know multi-trillion tons of ice bearing down, the land surface sinks. In this case, probably a thousand, fifteen hundred feet. I don't know if they the exact amount. I haven't read the latest studies. Um, the studies I've read go back twenty and thirty years. They're you know basically still in the right ballpark. Um, they've probably been refined you know, in the last decade, I have no doubt. But, but the point is that there's been a substantial uplift in the region where the glaciers existed up to perhaps two kilometers thick, right? Mile and a half, say roughly, thick of ice, which is gone. So the land is rebounding. All right, so you're seeing this, right? These are shorelines. So, and what you see here is a kind of a stepwise rebound. It's not a perfectly smooth process, but you'll also notice that the that the shorelines have a greater separation as you get to the older ones because the land was uh, rising faster. You right. see, so what is happening is the process is quite rapid early on, and then it slows down. But it's still happening, and who knows? It'll probably continue for several hundred or more feet before it's done right maybe a lot more than that so for people who are just listening what we're looking at is hudson bay and then there's all these strand lines that are all parallel with each other yes uh, and there's it looks like dozens and dozens of them how about how far apart are the were those in that picture randall like what was the do you know the diff, the distance between each one of those white lines that we were looking at roughly i would have to just this is just a guess but i'm gonna pro guess somewhere probably anywhere between 10 and 30 feet okay yeah that's Something amazing. like that. I guess now, yeah, we're going to need to uh, determine that with more accuracy. So um, I guess going to get the sure. get the helicopter pilot on. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> no, no, really, that'd be a very interesting trip to go up there and investigate that, wouldn't it? It would. So, um, yeah. See, there's. Uh, so we know there was isostatic uh, forces taking place where the, the ice goes away and we have all this evidence in various places that, 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 that the crust is like rebounding upwards. And so we know that that means that in other places it's sinking like out in the ocean. There, see, there's the point. Now, see, we do know, for example, uh, we see isostatic rebound um, in Nevada going on in Utah that is a result of the unloading that resulted from the drainage and evaporation of Lake Bonneville. Because right. the shorelines there are tilted because the because of differential isostatic adjustment, see? Okay. Where, in other words, where the, where the lake was deepest, right, there you're going to have more rebound because there you're going to have more isostatic depression. Right. So then what happens is the lake level, you've got the lake level there, but then when the ground rebounds, the shoreline that it left follows that and it becomes con convex upward. Mm. See? I see. And so that isostatic differentiation has been measured. I don't recall exactly what the numbers are, but it's pretty significant. Now, the thing you got to bear in mind too, though, is we're looking like, in fact, up at, at Hudson Bay, that's, uh, that's the granitic core of North America. That's the craton there. So, you know, the crust is very thick. Now, yeah. by contrast, oceanic crust is very thin. So the isostatic response to ocean loading and unloading may be more substantial than that of continents. Right. And is it there are some places in the British Isles where there's still its rebounds are still happening as well? There's a Yeah, yeah, in Scandinavia, in British yeah. Columbia. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There, there's when the when you have the the ice mass near the oceans, it basically what it does, let's see if I can show like let's say this is the ground and here's the ocean. Right. Now here's the ice mass pushes this area down, but then it creates glacial forebulge ah see that's the glacial forebulge right. then the glacial unloading the forebulge will do this see so there are there are considerable vertical movements in the earth's crust that's the point mm -hmm.